the stadium is filling up, awaiting for the match of Andre Agassi against Alex Correcha. And here comes Agassi as he's made his way from the locker room back to the stadium floor, where a year ago as an unseated player, he won his first U.S. Open title. Today, he takes the second step towards trying to repeat. But first, Sergio Bruguera, who is a clay court specialist, the two-time French Open champion. He's never made it past the fourth round here at the Open. He didn't get past the second round today. His opponent, Daniel Vacek, stunned the 11 seed. Get a close look at Bruguera now, because you're not going to see him anymore at the U.S. Open. Thanks to Vacek. Bruguera, the bottom of your screen. Just didn't have it. He's played at the Open seven times. He's never proven to be a hard court player. Vacek, too powerful off the grand strokes, and with his serve. Vacek advances in a straight set victory, 6-2, 6-3, 6 So tonight, the stadium will be as electric as ever as the top seed Andre Agassi takes to the courts. Now, prior to his 1994 Open title, the knock on Andre was that he was heavy on style and light on substance. But as Bill McAtee explains, that is hardly the case now. different now I know you know what makes me tick I know what you know fuels me when I used to step on the court I used to you know step on these you know landmines of these words like expectation and potential and you used to take away every desire I had to actually go out there and do what it is I love to do potential it can be a dangerous thing for an 18 year old that's when Andre Agassi was rated number three in the world yeah. and perhaps Again, a passing of the guard in American tennis tonight. The expectations were great, perhaps too great. For a player, a man needs room to grow, to emerge. Instead, Andre was delivered to the public as a finished product, a package, a commodity, an image, but not yet the player he knew he could be. The frosting without the cake sucks. and. He got his frosting early. He's, he's been searching for the substance. In his search, he's found a new coach and a friend in Brad Gilbert, who's managed to help Agassi find a new love for the game. It's not about winning and losing. It has nothing to do with being number one. Being number one is a, is a byproduct of doing what you're supposed to do. Like sweat, and work hard and above all else never stop reaching for more yeah. it's what Agassi has worked for all year and it's brought him to this point Agassi again kept it on and he serves a nice to win it bring it on for the first time Agassi enters a Grand Slam tournament with perhaps more to lose than to gain and more than ever the focus is on him Agassi getting out of car, with a mark. But while his fans may still focus on his hair, his girlfriend, and the image, Andre's focus is finally exactly where it should be.
finalist in 90, champion in 94. What is his fate in 95? John McEnroe certainly knows about expectations. He's in the stadium with Ted Robinson. Thanks, John. Well, of course, uh, last year there really were none. Andre Agassi came here as an unseeded player. John, and he wins. Now he's defending something. This is new for him, defending number one ranking, defending champion. Has it changed him at all? I'll tell you, he really enjoys it, though. I mean, he goes out there. He's got more on his shoulders than any other player. Whole big entourage around him. Brooke Shields as his girlfriend. You look at his results since the U.S. Open of last year, they're incredible. An amazing thing, he's played a lot of tennis this year, hasn't taken much time off. Well, once again, I'm going to give some early credit to Brad Gilbert, who's got him on a better regimen, got him a better practice schedule, gets him hit twice before a match when there were times where he didn't hit at all. Mm. And because of that, he's enjoying the game where he's playing better. And if you win all the time, it's very enjoyable, believe me. Well, let's uh, spend a moment here talking about his foe tonight, Alex Carreccia of Spain, a young man who probably is unknown to most Americans, but this guy's not a rollover. This guy's 27 in the world, but the bad news is it's all the results, barring one quarterfinal result last year in Indianapolis where he beat Stefan Edberg, I've been on clay. This guy had never won a match at the U.S. Open until this year, hasn't won a single match on hard courts the entire year until this particular match we see. 18 and 20 record at 27 in the world. Now, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but the computer does lie sometimes. He's not the 27th best player in the world on hard courts. And I think what we're going to see here is someone who's going to be overwhelmed by the situation unless there's some Herculean effort that he comes up with and somehow figures out a way that, hey, it's actually easier to run on hard courts than it is on play. You know what else I like, John, about this? You, know, you were a player who relished this scene, the night time in New York. Jimmy Connors relished it. It seems like Andre has taken your role over. He is the one guy right now who really enjoys this. Oh, he really does. I mean, he goes out there. Connors was a master at night. He's got people eating out of his palm. I enjoyed it more for the heat factor than, <laughs> than anything else. Andre loves the atmosphere. The more that's going on, the better. And if there's any guy that's taken over that mantle, clearly it's been him. Maybe Boris Becker is the other player who's had as much as on his shoulders, perhaps Andre, myself, Connors. But this guy is really taking a lot. I mean, not only is he trying to be the best tennis player in the world, but he's sort of in his own way trying to bring the level of and stature of tennis to a whole new level in terms of entertainment. 73 matches for Agassi already this year. Hard to believe that you can look at him with that number one in front of his name and think back to last year when he was a floater, a dangerous floater in the draw. 20 in the world last year coming into this tournament. Now the favorite, although I'd have to call him the co-favorite. I, I don't look at uh, this as any sort of big... Uh, Edge he's got over Pete Sampras. If Pete serves well, Andre doesn't have as good a day returning as he's capable of. Having. If that happens in the finals, it's a very even matchup. But as we all know, another 10 days of tennis before that point. And I think Boris Becker would like to think that he's an obstacle in the way of Agassiz as well. In terms of game plan and technically the way he played yesterday, he should definitely keep that style up, in my opinion. Certainly saving himself physically. 21-year-old Alex Karetcha to serve. Karetcha, one of the most well-liked players on tour, very popular young man. And Terrific win this year over Tomas Muster in Stad, noteworthy because it broke a 40-match winning streak on claim for Muster. Well, he's going to find out very soon that if you run around your back and you better hit a good forehand. On clay, you can get away with that easier because players are slipping and sliding and the player's not going to hit as clean. But here's the cleanest hitter of the ball in the game right now is Andre Agassi, playing with the most confidence than any player. Oh! And Karecha can ill afford to run around that back and hit a sort of three-quarters pace forehand to Andre's backhand. that he's got to have to deal with is the pace of that hard court surface. You see the way that ball skidded. Andre hits the ball extremely flat, a la Jimmy Connors. 
And he picked his spot. He saw the courage in trouble. Easy put away. Already triple break point. That's Andre, when he first came up, was a very, very fast starter. And for a while, for a couple of years, he had a period where he started slowly. And another thing that Gilbert's help, helped him with is get him going right off the bat, ready to play the first game. 15 One trait to Red Agassiz's career, he has been a wonderful front runner. He gets in front in a match, and he is tough to catch. Critch is going to have to have a, to learn on the spot here. He's got any chance of beating Andre tonight. A look from the Fuji blimp overhead on a very nice night at the National Tennis Center. This was the warmest day of the week, but again, the night's very pleasant. And as always, the crowd will take a while to file in from points all over to Flushing Meadows. And they will come tonight to see Andre Agassi. When you say Agassi is the cleanest hitter of the ball, John, what does that mean? Well, he hits the ball the hardest and the flattest. He's capable of hitting with a lot of topspin. Also, he sees the ball earlier than anyone else. So he has a better look at it before anyone else does. Although he's played a, a surprisingly weak game here so far. Double fault at the first point. Gretchen with some good depth off the ground the second point and really an unforced error there the third point have a chance to get back into it that would be a big boost for this young Spaniard. breaking back. Well, see, there's a danger. See, Andre ran around that backhand, decided to hit a forehand, and he, too, is going to pay the price if he doesn't do enough with that forehand. Kareccia pulling it for a winner. Courageous started with a good to deep second serve, but eventually forced Courage to hit this ball just where he wanted it. You see Courage bouncing up there in the back of the court. He seemed like he landed on his feet a little late, and Agassi put away that ball. Legs. That's what I find funny about the clay court guys. I really think that at times they don't realize they could actually move better on the surface, so they just put their mind to it. Is that all it is, John? Is it mine? It's also that there's certain muscles that are different. You get stiff in different areas of the legs, and you have to adjust to that. Usually what happens to these guys, as we see Andre rip another backhand winner, is they get real stiff after they played a couple of days of hunger. They say, oh my god, it's not good for my body. They don't realize they could get through it in a week or two. The correction has gotten himself back into this match. I know Andre Agassi has respect for 
this player, talked to Brad Gilbert, his coach, and they're well aware of this guy's scrambling ability. This is no Alex Lopez. Another unforced error there. this for a gauge of the appeal of Andre Agassi as he prepared to practice yesterday. Now he knows how John Paul George and Ringo fell. Just what he wanted to hear as he walked down the practice court for a little quiet hit. to get his feet moving as well. Got caught a little bit flat-footed that last game. I think he expected maybe a little more El Foldo act here in the early part of the match, and Correcha surprised him. Got right back into this, so he's going to have to go back to work again. quiet hit here at night either as the crowd continues to file in during play and there's at night here it always seems like there's just a hum. I don't know, the players hear that? <laughs> Are you kidding? They hear everything. Even the points going on? It's been determined here by most players now that they will play through this and I think mm -hmm. that's a good move. The matches would be another half hour, hour longer every night. Remember when Yvonne was out here. by the end of the match. You'd be so busy picking at them. <laughs> There's a lot of people walking around at night. And they're not as uh, ruly as they are. I don't know if that's a word, but there's certainly a lot more unruly at night. Mm -hmm. Five points. Thank you. Nice win today for Brother Patrick. He's into the third round. That's an excellent opportunity for all players in that section. No seeds left in the quarter, so that leaves either Daniel Vacek, Nicholas Pereira, my brother, or Alexander Volkov as a quarter finalist. Last year, we had five unseeded quarter finalists. That's a big inside out for him there. Believe it or not, he needed that. Well, since Fred Stolle won it in 66, only two unseated players had even made the finals. happen here is Andre's going to start going more to Kareche's forehand, <coughs> excuse me, because his backhand's a little awkward to handle, that slice. He can come over it, and he's got a good slice that he's been mixing up nicely. And it might be easier for Andre's ground strokes to go to his forehand. We'll see if he does that. <coughs> so far,
far he's been content to play the back end. He may just feel he's can hit that angle back end better than Krejci. Pull him off the court and then whip it cross court when he has the open court. Our evening of feature match, Andre Agassi, the defending champ and number one seed, and he's meeting 21-year-old Spaniard Alex Carreccia. But a good player, ranked currently 27 in the world. Very well played serve there. Seems like uh, what he may lack in hard court experience, John, he can compensate for with some talent, some athletic ability. And effort. And effort, yeah. This guy tries awful hard. That's known around, especially the clay court circuit. And I think Andre Agassi is a little surprised out here right now that Koretsch is putting up such a fight. tell you that he had to cover an awful lot of court to lose that point. That's going to wear you down. Andre Agassi was barely moving. Correction moving side to side. That's going to wear you down after a while. Tennis's great friend, Alan King, watching from his perch right above Agassi. Beautiful. Alex Karecha decides to venture into the net, and look at this. Couldn't be hit any better. <laughs> the other thing Karecha's got to watch out for, it's not only the running, it's the stopping. That's really what gets your legs tired and tight. That's why you don't want to have to get up a full head of steam too often, because it's that much more on your body. You have to stop quickly. And I'm sure it's surprising Agassi. I know that Agassi is aware of Correct and has respect for him, but given the set of circumstances, yes, I think he's a little surprised right now. Although I think he would have liked to have done a little bit more with that pass. Oh, we're on serve in the first. Andre Agassi broke to start this match. Alex Correcha broke back, and we've stayed on serve since. I see Agassi taking a deep breath there. That's a good idea. Things are not going his way at the moment. How much smarter of a player is he now, John, just over the last year? Oh, quite think? a bit, really. I mean, if I say percentage turns, if I had to guess, I would say 20 to 40 percent. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Taking his time at previous point, you see him take a deep breath, walk around, take three or four balls. Good time to slow himself down, make sure he's going to get back on track here. All those little things add up. Just 
doing that more consistently. Never used to go out practice twice before a match. You're lucky if you got him out mm -hmm. there once. Before he played the French Open Finals against Andres Gomez, didn't warm up. Didn't warm up the whole tournament before he played. Action still going on around the National Tennis Center. And there in the hinterlands, court 17, Andre Medvedev is going to a fourth set. Sarkis Sarkeesian. The NCAA champ from Arizona State winning the third set. And those two actually grew up together. <laughs> Played each other in the juniors. Sarkeesian moving here. The <laughs> man was uh, caught when Armenia that. broke away from the Soviet Union, lost much of its ability to finance a tennis program. An awful earthquake there, so things are tough there at the moment. So Agassi holds for three all. You can watch Andre pick up the pace here, put a little bit more pressure, I feel, on Croatia, try to take charge right now. It'd be a good game to do it. And Croatia try to hold up the fort and try to frustrate Andre, get him frustrated. That's his game plan. No! Into those type of shots. It's exactly what Correcha wants. Dare him to go for just a little bit too much. If you have that type of game uh, game plan, you cannot afford, as we look at Brad Gilbert, Andre's coach, to make mistakes like that. You'll see some of those with Andre because he's going for more, but Correct has got to minimize those unforced errors. Backhand that's correct here, but that was a good slice backhand, and Agassi really hit a great shot to get to win that point. What great comfort to know you have that weapon that you can use at almost any time. And then you entice the clay quarter mm -hmm. into one of those awkward shots when you're not sure whether to come in or stay back. That's the one these guys have to be ready for. Because that's what all hardcore players would do to clay court players. See if they can handle that shot. That's almost the first step. Second serve coming on a break point. Just there. Even Andre Agassi, the number one player in the world, sometimes makes tactical mistakes. That one he should have made at least uh, Correcha hit the winner. Still got another break point. Just hit it, a big kick serve and good depth on it and placing it well. So even though he's not hitting it hard, it's not an easy shot, not, not an easy serve to hit at the moment. Correcha coming across the court ready to hit that passing shot. That's correct. He slices back in. He makes Agassi hit the volley, and he was ready to hit it if Agassi didn't hit that 
as well as he did. Third break point. I got a little bit of a break there because Andre's return was a very awkward shot and Karecha did that very thing. He hesitated. Andre pulled his forehand later in the point a little bit wide, it appears. Karecha ran back to the baseline. when you make a decision that I'm not going to come to that. He got back in a hurry. Nagasi has clearly learned right away that, as you mentioned, he has to hit shots with some conviction. You can't just put him in play. This guy's going to run him down. Maybe try to bring this guy in, see, see how well he comes in, although he's shown some good mm -hmm. touch so far in that. Oh. That's a big game as Karecha saved three break points. Well, while most of the attention is riveted inside Stadium Court on Andre Agassi's match, there's still yep. time to do it. In fact, this might be the best time to do your shopping. No lines. Also, a match going on in the grandstand tonight. Men's singles, Derek Ristagno. Coming back to the tour this year, is playing Renzo Furlan of Italy. A lot, a lot easier to cut that ball off high than, than it is to have to hit winners from the base on, even for Andre Agassi. Well, I would think, John, that last game is a, a game that sends a message. This match may take a while. I mean, Karaicha did not go away when he had every chance to. He had a big smile on, on his face when he switched sides. I don't, don't count your chickens before they hash, but Karaicha happy to be in it at the moment. One score to note there, a good win for young American Vince Spadia. He's into the third round after knocking Emilio Sanchez out today. serving. That's just what Andre Agassi wanted. Put the pressure right back on this young Spaniard. And that's just what Correcha wanted. An easy first point. This has been a nice mess. They've both sort of gotten what they wanted. Agassi got the good start. Unfortunately, let Koretcha back in, and he's happy to be back in and hanging in there. And not really just hanging in there. Now. His shots seem to have a little bit more bite on them, or else Andre's just not picking them up as cleanly. Well, you made the point early. This is no Alex Lopez here. Far from it. Lear. Far from it. strong upper body along with Michael Steak saying very strong upper body as well. Oh, that's a great defensive forehand. Oh. Great 
terrific shot. And Spain's Alex Carreccio holds for 5-4. Stadium court. And Alex Carreccia putting on a very strong showing in the first set. We are on serve. Agassi serving at 15 low. Yeah, we see Sergi Gregor do that with not a whole lot of success at chip forehand return. Look at Brooke Shields, Andre's girlfriend. And Andre Agassi just ripped that Carreccia slice return for a winner. Maybe not a bad idea occasionally, but certainly don't want to get into a habit of doing it. He's probably saying, John, how could I possibly take it a full swing of that and hit it cleanly? I, I needed to chip that. Total miss hit there. That was a tough serve. 105 miles per hour out wide and well placed. Another part of Andre's game that, that's improved the last few months even. So John, now you spent the last couple of weeks working with Sergi Bruguera, another Spaniard, clay court, extraordinary clay court player. What is Carreccia doing that Bruguera didn't, or that you see that a clay quarter must do to, well, to he's survive? He's trying a lot harder. That's one thing he's doing. He's also well, that's simple. got a lot more energy out there. He's just said to my, himself, I'm going to go out and play my game the best I possibly can. I'm going to do everything I possibly can to stay with Andre Agassi, but I'm not going to change it up. And I'm just going to make Agassi beat me, at least. Unfortunately, Sergi didn't have that same frame of mind when he played today. Ball came out of Karencha's pocket. They're going to play a left. But I want to give credit to Daniel Vacek. Vacek served big today. The young Czech, a very well-conditioned athlete. Bruno Rabot in the chair. <laughs> Andre Agus, he's starting to kid around with his entourage, but... Uh, That looks more like, a, once again, that when the fighters take a good shot and they start laughing, I did hurt, it did hurt a little bit. A little uncomfortable out there right now. Love 40. Love 40. 40. Not 40 love down when you're up love 40. You'd love it. That's exactly what he's thinking, Ted. Why didn't I wait to a better <laughs> like time? The, the three break points. <laughs> Stadium court, many may have anticipated an Agassi blowout. That's not going to happen. Alex Carreccia has played very well in his first set. He was broken to start the set, but broke right back and saved three break points at three all. Neither players come close to breaking since that game. Two easy points so far for Andre Agassi in this game. Taking him to 30 love in a second serve. Oh! I'm always amazed how clay court specialists can stand so far behind the baseline, hit these heavy topspin points, and they land just like a foot inside the baseline. That's what I was just thinking. I mean, Andre's back there by the by the tarp that playing is, that point. That's not an easy shot to handle. 
Now, if they could figure out a way to hit the same shot and flatter at times, it would really confuse their opponent. Suddenly, Kareja, two points from his set. Are you sure? Already in the open, we've seen that decision on several crucial points. Either to hit it or let it go. If in doubt, if you have an open yeah. court, hit it. Now it cost Lisa Raymond, the young American today, in her match with Kimiko Date. Taking his toll a little bit here. Set point. Oh! Another double ball. Unbelievable. And the first set to Alex Karecha as Agassi double faulted away the set on consecutive points. Definitely a surprise on center court. The mm. first one we've seen. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, I would think this first game right here, John, would be an important one for Agassi. If he could bounce right back with a break. Certainly the first couple of games. Mm -hmm. Getting charged. Don't forget, he broke the first game in the first set. <laughs> Even if Kareja does lose his serve, you know he's going to fight the same way he did in the first set. I guess he's going to have to keep that level high. Kareja really playing well right now. And that's the first loose shot he's hit in a while. Players have good first serve percentage, but a lot more unforced errors for Andre Agassi in that first set. Already 21. That's that's quite a bit for anybody. I see Correcture with only five in 12 games, only five errors. And that ball is being hit quite hard at him. Tennis on hard court at its best, right there. Correcture recovered beautifully from one position he was in, in a bad position. He was able to flick that forehand deep, get himself right back into the point. Andre over anxious this last 15, 20 minutes.
second effort that's uh, winning him this match right now. Agassi looks to be surprised that he's still in points. Medvedev finding himself in a little trouble now. Sarkeesian. 4-2 in the fourth. give that point away so easily. And you're right, Ted, it would be a big boost for Andre to get going right here in the second set. shot just floating that backhand back and that's just a reaction winner up the line that looked like a hardcore player no backswing not a lot of tossman just guided it down the line beautifully it's a classic example of making Agassi finish the points even there that's, you pointed that out early, and was clear by the unforced yes. errors that he, Karecha, is not going to beat himself tonight. And that's his game plan. Mm -hmm. Entice Agassi into going for too much and frustrating him. And he's starting to have some real success doing that. You get away with a lot of miss hits, a total miss hit off the forehand. Then he hits that nice slice down the line. I guess he had a couple different looks in that point. Another unforced error. The wind appeared to kick up just. In the last 10 or 15 seconds, resulting in Kareja double faulting there. His first of the night. keep this up throughout an entire three out of five set match. He's running an awful lot right now. Certainly doesn't seem to be bothered so far. Well, would you think, John, 21 in the clay quarter, that uh, shouldn't be a problem? It shouldn't be. He's played enough on hard court so that his muscles aren't tight from limited play. Play in Indianapolis a couple weeks ago. And he has been here, I believe, for a couple weeks now. And he should be okay in that regard as well. It looks like this match is headed to the fifth set. that forehand out. That's the flattest ball he's hit. And he had a chance there to hit a backhand winner off the line. He went for too much. 
maybe a little mentally fatigued. He's been a long game here, the first game in the second set. He's clearly playing it safer at the moment, but still, he didn't expect to see this. Creature picks just the right time to go behind Andre Agassi. And the wind was swirling on that point. <laughs> A good instinct there by Creature. Took that ball early, hit it flat up the line, and started to move forward to come into net. Agassi pulled that pass wide. I would think he's really thinking out there. Tonight. This would have to be terribly frustrating to Agassi if he cannot win this game with all the battle he's put into it. He's had some real chances to win this game. You're right, he's not going to be happy about it. Sometimes hard to figure how a guy can miss a shot like that when he makes all these other shots that are so much tougher. And you got to figure it's just lost a little concentration there. Maybe took his eye off the ball at the last second, second to see where Andre was moving. You got to think he'd make that shot 99 times out of 100. No. See, that's the difference between us, John. You wonder how he can miss it. I'm well aware. <laughs> oh, well, then tell us. <laughs> tell me how Andre just missed that return. Top with him. Doesn't want to hit a lot of those, those total miss hits. You can feel the tension out there from Andre Agassi. Things not the way he expected it, not as relaxed as he wanted to be. This has been some game. First game, second set, seventh deuce. Second, ball floated about a foot long. And I think he surprised Agassi once again coming in behind that approach. Picked some good times to do it, too, so far in this match. On another point, Karecha has not been able to win. The end point. And he missed another one. They're going back and forth between the deuce point and Karecha's ad.
Dolphins. Excellent volley right there. And I'm not quite sure he had to hit this shot. I think that was going long, going wide, but he wasn't going to take any chances. That was not an easy shot where, where he ended up hitting it. Side where they hit a forehand or backhand, waited about a second too long to decide. Back to Deuce again. The players haven't been in the chairs for quite a while. Karicha breaking serve to win the first set. <laughs> this marathon game opening the second set. At least a 15 minute game. The wind has really started to become a factor out there. Tempers, temperatures dropped considerably in the last, since the last game. <laughs> this has the feel of a front moving through, doesn't it? Things are definitely heating up today, and now it appears to have cooled quite a bit. you in a change of pace. Change? Change your point of view with EOS lenses and the Rebel X from Canon. 8 Central. The defending champ and number one player in the world knows now he has a fierce fight on his hands tonight. Alex Carreccia, 21-year-old from Barcelona, won the first set and held in the first game of this set. 24 point game. It'll be interesting to see what happens the next couple games, how both players react. It's a good deep approach out by correction, just inside the baseline. And he's showing that he just doesn't do it all from the backcourt. Shows a nice touch at net so far. players choosing to stay back on both their first and second serves. A lot of rallying going on out here tonight. Wait for the right time to hit those superb ground strokes. He wants to move forward at an angle. Give himself a margin of error there, so in case he catches a little late, he'll still go in. Good move. thing Agassi has done, John, although he's down a set, he has held his serve easily. The only thing you want to guard against is when you go into those sets sometimes where you're always close to breaking your opponent, but you don't quite do it. Mm -hmm. Win your serve real easily the whole set, and suddenly that one time, suddenly you lose your serve, and that sort of happened the first set. You just sort of cruising along, had that early break. Next thing you know, incredibly double faulted double twice. Double. <laughs> Correcho opening with a double, his second. <laughs> Not only is Spain well represented in the women's game, but look at that, five men ranked in the top 30. 
I mean, Fortunately, we even couple managed of, to get two of them here. I was just going to say, <laughs> never heard of Alberto Costa. Well, I should say, I've never seen him. Parasitegi now playing here. Andre Agassi's always had a great backhand overhead. Another example right there. Alberto Costa gave Tomas Musser all he could handle at the French Open. Mm -hmm. Watch his backhand overhead by Agassi. So strong up there, just flicks it. <laughs> Beat Jim Courier as well in the French Open. Alberto Costa, a lot of talent, another clay court specialist. <laughs> An opening that Agassi must take advantage of. 15, 15. Two break points. Well, you've got to figure if he keeps plugging away that Kareich is going to start slowing down. He's doing an awful lot of running. Oh. And that's the chess match that's going on. Kareich is daring him to go for a little too much, those unforced errors. And because he's wanting to go for a lot, keep him moving, but can't make those mistakes. That's a big forehand by Porsche. It's very tough to tell where he is. Watch here, there's a good look right here. Runs around that back and sets himself up. He too gives himself a little margin of for error. It's a winner to get back to juice. Well, John Kareche has played the big points marvelously this far. Extremely intelligent match so far for this young guy. Passing shot. He didn't need to go for his biggest swing. You want to get better contact there. Got himself in a lot of trouble. Really an easy point after that. Correction, stop running. Well, he certainly made a good effort to get that drop shot. Well, this is the first time we've seen him stop right there. <laughs> he said, No chance. I guess he tripped a little bit on the way to that ball, was able to keep a nice lob over Correction's head. I guess he's not happy with that call. Fox himself there. I don't think he ever had any intention of coming in that slice, and he got himself a little out of position, and Agassi hit a good hard ball right back at him, and Correction missed the next one. Another break point for Andre Agassi, this time with a second serve. Well, you can only pull yourself out of so many of these. tonight from the Fuji Blimp and at the helm tonight captains John McHugh and Brian Van Wagner and we've had a great week beautiful nights all and 
spectacular views of New York City. in that groove. It's about awfully deep. Mm -hmm. Now, had been a, or I should say, Correcha had been a Houdini. He had saved eight straight break points before Agassi finally converted the last one. Well, the good news for Agassi is he's getting a lot of chances, but he's going to have to start capitalizing a little more. 15. He doesn't want to have Kareja break right back like he did in the first set, that's for sure. That was not a smart shot by Kareja there. That was a throwaway point. You can ill afford throwaways with Agassi. He tried to hit a, a drop volley, a drop shot actually in that position that maybe would bounce on Andre's side and, and come back to him. I guess that's what he was trying. You better hit that right. Thank you, Coach. Agassi up a break, second set. The second, let's go to Michael Barkan. All right, Teddy, with Davis Cup captain, yes, yes. United States Davis Cup, Davis Cup captain, Tom Gullickson. Uh, what do you make of this? Um, a lot of unforced errors for Andre. He's starting to come back a little in the second set, but this has certainly not been like him. Well, you know, Krejci is a tough player. He doesn't make many mistakes, and and uh, Andre started off at the break the first game, then he lost his serve right away, and uh, he's just been a little impatient and uh, a little bit annoyed with himself, and it's tough conditions. The wind is swirling, and, you know, he's just got to be a little more patient and, and wait for his opportunities, but then be aggressive when he's got a chance, and I think he's got the game, obviously, to handle this guy, but he's got to work hard because this guy's a roadrunner, and he's not going away. This guy knocked off uh, Mooster's uh, long clay court win streak, but you got two baseliners banging it out. Uh, it would seem that maybe someone comes to the net here to break it up. Yeah, well, particularly Andre played a good game to break, uh, to go up to 2-1, to and, he, and he broke by coming in three times, and this guy's got a weak second serve, so I think Andre can take the second serve and whack it and come in a couple times. Off the subject, how's Timmy doing? Timmy's doing well. Yeah, he's... Uh, He's uh, improving, the tumors are shrinking, and uh, he's making good progress. That's wonderful. Thanks, Tommy. Ted. That is great news. Many well-wishers for Tim Gullickson. Agassi well behind the baseline was certain winner if it had gone in just missed that wide well, while we're well wishing I, and you probably have we wish our buddy Barry McKay mm -hmm. happy birthday number six oh you said it that's my dad's name so I don't want to rub it in or anything <laughs> Carefully concealing that number all day. He looks great, especially for Michelle, his wife, lovely wife. <laughs> she thought he was 47. <laughs> Took his eye off the ball there. The pace bothering him as well. Tom Gullickson made a good point. Take a couple of those short second serves and attack them. Oh. 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 He's 
the guy who's at the, got the best return in tennis, so take advantage of it. Jeez. Kretcher must have thought he's still playing on clay, trying to slide. You better watch out. He must have seen Goran Ivanizovic the other day. What happened to him? Tennis Center, and as is the custom in the first week, still action going on all over the National Tennis Center. In fact, uh, we just discovered where indeed Barry McKay has been celebrating tonight. He's out on court 17 watching the Medvedev Sarkeesian battle. And uh, the youngster from Arizona State is now up a break in the fifth. On the way to writing a terrific story. Agassi here is up a break in the second. That's an example of Agassi's uh, impatience and really not being ready there because he had a big first serve, but I think he half expected Correggio to miss the return. And when it came back, he really wasn't ready to hit him, then he decided to go for too much. So. Another big serve out wide this time. Not as hard, hit as hard, but well, well placed. Take the next couple of points easily. And a good close there. Not give Krejci a chance for that pass. He said, I was about to say, there's that chip forehand return that's not going to work against Agassi, but. To see with that unforced error. He's not happy with himself. This probably was not on his itinerary tonight. Losing a set, having to fight this not hard. at all. The look on Agassi's face right now is that of the younger Andre. He was more easily frustrated. No. Need to take some lessons from uh, Connors and yourself. Get closer to the mic. Speak clearly. I think he did take lessons from us. That's why he had a towel over his mouth. <laughs> Did well to recover there, but he's too far behind the baseline. 
Agassi knew if he just got that volley over the net, it was his point. Not what you call a textbook volley there. either. Mm. Heavy looping forehand that just drops in at the last second. Now with a chance to get the 4-3. Oh, and that's where it is, but still Agassi up a break in the second set. in New York City on the grounds of the what was the 1964 World's Fair. Not the only remaining structure, the Unisphere. And on stadium court, Andre Agassi losing the first set to Alex Korecha. Agassi is up a break in the second. Playing as if he'd like to get this done in about six minutes. Well, Medvedev back on serve in the fifth. Mm. Here. I think I'm more pop on that serve. and watch a young player like a Karecha that you haven't seen much of before, but his great shot-making ability. My favorite part is his effort level mm -hmm. and the energy level. This is high-level, supposedly high-level professional tennis. Let's see this type of effort when you go out against the best player in the world. This is what tennis needs. And you hear signs of life, which uh, nice to hear that here at night in the stadium court. Fans appreciate what they're seeing. and then flicking it cross court for a winner. 15. Definitely a lot of wrist involved in his ground strokes. I wonder if he's starting to slow down yeah. just a touch here. Yeah, I think the way he reacted after missing the backhand. 
he also knows he can't afford to miss those type of back ends. Continuing to play an intelligent match. And he's those legs. this second serve. Right now well behind the baseline. group, Phil Agassi, brother on the left, Brooke Shields, and friends, and very happy that Agassi has even the match, and did it with a break, so that he starts the third with his serve. And he ripped a forehand winner up the line, the first point. Sort of like that, but to the other side. for that mistake. Look, almost looked like he was going at Krejci. The problem was Krejci was behind the baseline. Oh! Probably irritated because of that previous shot and double fault. Fourth double for Agassi. The first two consecutive points cost him the first set. Uh. Guess what? It's break point. Does Correcha have to change anything? He's just going to have to be running an awful lot and not necessarily change it. He may not win that way, but it would be his best bet if he had the energy and the endurance. Uh. He's been mixing it up nicely in this match. in those legs still. He bounced into that forehand. Second set. Great ended up winning that game, but it took a lot out of him.
good idea to go back behind Karicha. With the volley? With the volley, because he's moving across, expecting the forehand. If you go to the back, and in all likelihood, he's going to have to chip it again. That's where you pounce on it. Well, how about that? Karicha breaks to start the third. John McEnroe, Ted Robinson on Stadium Court. Glad to have you with us on night four on USA. And this is the first real premier night match we've witnessed. Welcome to the U.S. Open. Yes, it is. A little few days late, but entertaining tennis. Alex Karecha, 21-year-old Spaniard, ranked 27 in the world. Took the first set from Andre Agassi. Agassi won the second. Karecha with a break to start the third. Well, Karecha played that just about as well as he could under the circumstances. So That's just too good by Andre Agassi there. Pressure on the defensive, well behind the baseline. With that one, no shot at. Good move once again there. Put the pressure back on Agassi. He really picked his spots beautifully tonight. Matter of fact, the way he's going, I'd recommend him to do it a little bit more, even. And particularly if it keeps Agassi from doing it. Absolutely. He's a good natural volley. As you can tell, he's got good hands around the net. He's got a good touch. It's a total miss hit there. Take those big swings. You got to make sure you watch the ball until it hits your racket. Agassi sometimes makes that makes that look so easy. He just guides it up the line for a winner. Wants the break right back. See there, not quite able to get his feet in position to hit it the way he'd like. Was forced to hit it a little too far behind him there. One more chance here to even things up at one all. about a world-class passing shot. That was it right there. Look at this backhand. He's five feet behind the baseline. He hit that with pace and precision and then waited to the last instant and flicked that inside-out forehand. Looked like he wanted to give up on a couple shots. 
for that one last chance. You see him pull that into the net. Look at this reaction here. The good thing was he got right back over to the air court, get ready for the next point. And Ferencia comes back from 1540 with some spectacular shots to hold serve. Terrific match here. Now let's go down to Michael Bartan. Teddy with Jose Clavet. Alex Karech's coach. Your player is like a Toreador out there. He's doing everything. What's your game plan going into this match? Okay, we talked before the match, and I told him that he has to fight as much as he could and try to change uh, the game all the time. And that's what he's doing, and for the moment, it's okay. Yeah, you said you had some concerns that he might get a little tired. What do you think now? No, I mean, at the beginning of the second set, he was tired because he's running for every point and he's fighting for every point but now it's okay and, and he's uh, now he's okay i mean he's running and he can fight again now, i'm sure many are surprised that he even took one set from andre agassi what's your are you surprised no 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 because and i mean for me it's the, i mean i'm not really surprised what did you tell him when he walked onto the court before? You said something to him in Spanish. When he came, when he came out, something about uh, you know changing. Uh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that he's playing a lot on on the Agassi's Balkan, and he has to try to move him a little bit more. All right, can you give him a little cheer in Spanish? Come on, no, vamos, vamos. <laughs> All right, Ted, back to you. <laughs> No one can coax things out of people like Michael Barkan. Huh? Did, did he say that he said something to him during the match, or was that before the match? He, not allowed to do it during the match. I the same thing. He's lucky he didn't hurt himself here. You're not going to see this too often. And you can really tell his eyes off the ball, though, there. take his toll on Correcha. He's not doing enough with the ball, and Agassi's just waiting patiently and making him run, making sure he doesn't miss. He's wearing Correcha. Now, Correcha's got to do more than that, and most of the time he has. Stop right here. This uh, wrinkle, someone's tennis voice. Court. Terrific battle unfolding between Andre Agassi, the defending champ, and Alex Correcha of Spain. At the same time, on court 17, there's been a terrific five-set match nearing its end. Let's go to Barry McKay. All right, Ted. Court 17. This is Sarkis Sarkisian serving now, Ted, leading 5-4 in the fifth. He has come from two sets to love down. The current NCAA champion out of Arizona State, and he has put on some great tennis here. A little kind of a drop shot off a short ball. And Sarkisian now 15 love, three points away from a major upset here on court 17. I want John McEnroe to know, in spite of my advanced age, I sprinted out here, vaulted up these steps, and it's been quite a match. Quick hands. The lob, just over the baseline. Medvedev tries the top spin lob. And so now Sarkisian 
30 love, two points away. Talk about concentration. This kid has really shown some experience out here, and he is just out of Arizona State. The current NCAA champion from Armenia, as John mentioned earlier, Medvedev and Sarkeesian played as they were juniors in the old Soviet Union. He slips. Solid return for Medvedev, trying to get back in this fifth set. 30-15. Place is packed out here. In fact, people streaming from the grounds when they heard the noise as they knew an upset was brewing here. stay in this. Sarkeesian has concentrated well throughout the entire match. He had some breaks to go down two sets to love. Second serve. So now, Sarkis Sarkisian at match point here on court 17. In court shortly. The biggest moment, maybe, except that finals of the NCAA right here for Sarkisian. Tonight, the defending champion, Andre Agassi, is having a battle. He is split sets with Alex Correcha of Spain, and the Spaniard is up a break in the third set. Well, Agassi and Correcha serve a very high first serve percentage. The difference, the unforced errors. Agassi is also with twice as many winners, so you sort of think that even it out. And that's why we have a very even match right now. It seems John Koretsch's strategy even going to a serve. He just looks like he's getting that first serve in. That's a big four. And his main concern is getting that ball deep. But I guess he can't jump all over, and he's done very well. Even his second serve, it doesn't have much pace at all. He's had pretty su good success with the depth and also the placement. <laughs> that time, even though it was well placed, it wasn't enough. Correcha won the first set consecutive double faults by Agassi. Andre won the second set, 6-3. Times I've seen Correcha a little impatient. <laughs> oh, that's another small play. 
Not only is he volleying well, those approach shots are nice and deep, well placed. Takes a good time to do it. He knows he only needs to hit a good solid volley, not a great one. So he certainly shouldn't got back for that. Must have been wrong footed. Once again, though, very well placed. And the game to Correcha. 4 2 in the third. Now let's go back downstairs. Michael Barkan. Teddy, we're on, the, we're on the grift right now with John Cusack, star of the Grifters, star of Bullets Over Broadway, and making his first appearance at the U.S. Open. What do you think so far? Well, I don't know. Do you think Alex uh, can uh, do it? I, I, think he, I think he can take him the distance. It's like a Rocky Balboa scenario, right? I mean, what is he ranked? 27th in the world. What, are you feeding me lines? I don't know. I'm <laughs> just saying this is the number one guy, and it's like go, it looks like it's going to go five sets. It's amazing. You play any tennis? Uh, badly. You do anything athletic at all? I do many things athletically, but most of them badly. Like four things I can do well, but not tennis. Now you live in New York. Are you work, working on anything in particular? I'm working in New York. I'm working on a film called City Hall with Al Pacino. And just uh, my friend Kevin over here got me some tickets to the Open. And uh, never been to a tennis match, a professional tennis match. So it's great. What's it like to work with Al Pacino? It's amazing. It's probably like playing tennis with Andre Agassi. <laughs> Who's directing? Harold Becker. Huh. Well, now, you think you'll be back for the rest, any, any time at all during the rest of the tournament? Yeah, I hope so. Can I get some tickets? Great. All right, well, we're just hanging out with John Cusack. Ted, back to you. Barkan finally met his match. It took five years to happen. <laughs> Just serving. He is up a break in the third set. The first two sets were split. And that short ball to the forehand continuing to give Agassi problems. Jimmy Connors used to have loads of problems with that when he was playing. Why is that? Any particular reason? For the grip, the way he held the grip and he wanted to hit it flat. And he was a stubborn guy. Exactly right. Normally standing right at the baseline or with inside the baseline and now on the run here. And that's not a good sign. He doesn't want to be that far back. He's not as comfortable back there as Karachi is. Not too bad. Just long, and it's now 5-3. Karicha in the third. Now something to think about. Andre Agassi on his march to the U.S. Open Championship last year only played five sets once, and that was his very tough round of 16 match with Michael Chang. He only played four sets twice. He had four of his seven wins here were in straight sets. This third set isn't over yet. Rich is going to have to play a heck of a game the next game. But a 
as he does, he goes up two sets to one. Very interesting development. Courageous serving for the third set. These frustrations boiled over. Karecha has played so well tonight. I'll tell you, that was a gutsy move there. That was not a particularly good approach shot. Agassi had plenty of time for that, but he put the pressure on him. And Agassi felt it. You could see him holding it too long and trying to guide it and not miss it. One more break point opportunity here. short inside the service line. I guess he's got too much power from there. First 
the hustle, but then to be able to hit that ball in the court, that is not easy. slices that stays real low. And starting to stretch a lot more out there on the court. Stretch his legs out, Alex Karecha. Maybe starting to feel some tightness. That's a good flat return by Karecha there. You really get the sense you now I'm watching this set play out that this is the decisive part of the match. Certainly for Karecha, I believe. Either guy's going to have a real tough time coming back to win two more sets. I'd give Andre a heck of a lot better chance to come back, though, than Karecha. Very few chances to break Agassi. The last time it was a double fault that did Agassi in and cost him the first set. changeover what you were talking about well I'm not quite sure what device he's got no, there <laughs> I'm just I want to be sure he's careful with the placement of it <laughs> well, that, that's uh, that's obvious Should have put that away, took it too casually. Correct your guess right. Hit the back end of the open court. was just trying to spin that in and took immediate advantage. again running down a number of balls in that point. And I can see having to hit a clean winner to get back to 30 all.
From 30 love, it has gone to break point. And this is for six all. Brooke Shields' face there. Nothing more needs to be said. Desperate look. Correction <laughs> cannot believe he missed that back end. Just trying to play a defensive back end deep. Went for a little bit too much. Making sure he makes Agassi hit the ball just what he should be doing. Jimmy Connors. Only time he's done that ever at the Open. Well, this is almost like the baptism of the 95 Open. It's officially here. It's shocking to happen to a man who relishes the night matches in New York. John, I wonder if there's any comparison between what Agassi's enduring tonight and your match that you referred to with Paul Harhouse here. Second round. No, 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 no. I, I never, literally never heard of Harhouse. Never seen him play. This is a different... Uh, Correct has been around the clay court circuit for a couple years, and... His name has been bandied about as a tough clay quarter. This is no secret. The question was whether he could translate it to hard courts. That was the big question. seed Andre Agassi has his back against the wall tonight. How will the number two seed Pete Sampras fare tomorrow night? You'll see that here on USA as he goes up against Jaime Izaga. These two played once before. In fact, it was last year in the fourth round. Pete Sampras was the defending champion. He led two sets to one. He had a three-love lead in the fourth set. 
He's not in the best shape. Jaime Iziga came back to beat him. And Pete Sampras, after being down 5-2 in the fifth, tied it up. But he went down in five sets to Jaime Iziga. Again, it's Sampras Iziga tomorrow night here on USA. I played pretty well yesterday, so hopefully I can get a little, little revenge. And, uh, you know, it's just a match where I just have to stay on top of him. He doesn't have a real, real big shot to hurt me, so I just need a, to stay aggressive and hopefully kick his little ass. <laughs> no mercy, it's no sassy, baby. <laughs> we'll see if Pete can back up his words tomorrow night here on USA. Now back to the stadium to Ted and John. Well, that brought a smile to McEnroe's face. So we're allowed to say that on the air now? <laughs> oh, my gosh. We know what we've done. <laughs> Thank you, Pete, once again. <laughs> well, Andre Agassi now knows he needs five. He needs five. Concerned Brad Gilbert. Needless to say. That's well, yeah, one of Gareth's won. We know the ones that he's won, that's for sure. Most of the ones that Agassi's lost. Mm -hmm. A lot more unforced errors. His first and third sets. Particularly good record. And in only one of those five matches coming here, that was the victory over Connors. to feel those legs a little more. Starting to think about the fifth set. What he's facing, see him trying to stretch those legs out. He must be feeling it. Up, up and that's what Agassi's got to guard against. Again, getting caught in no man's land. Chose to move backwards instead of for forwards on that short ball, and Krejci took advantage. Catching both lines on that ace. Number seven.
1986, she was fully restored for the celebration of her 100th birthday. And almost 10 years later, Lady Liberty stands as proudly as ever in New York City's harbor. A gift to the United States from France, the Statue of Liberty was unveiled by President Grover Cleveland on October 28, 1886. At her feet, it is inscribed, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. And many a weary soul has found comfort and strength in her powerful grace. Her neighbor, Ellis Island, was the first stop for the 17 million immigrants who entered the United States between 1892 and 1954 in the most massive migration the world has ever known. Lady Liberty's promise of freedom and opportunity must have renewed the hopes and dreams of millions as they embarked upon their new lives in America. Today, half of America's population can trace its roots to Ellis Island, and no city better displays such richness of ethnic and cultural diversity than New York, where 9 million inhabitants speak 80 languages under the ever-inspiring presence of the Statue of Liberty. USA would like to extend a, extend a special thanks to the Museum of the City of New York and the New York Historical Society for their cooperation in the production of New York Histories. Tomorrow, our day session kicks off at 11 a.m. Eastern. On the card, Michael Che and his match with Stefano Pescosolido. We'll also see Steffi Graf. She will play at 11 Eastern as well against Natalie Toziat in the third round match. Also in the day action tomorrow, Mary Pierce, Tomas Mooster. A good match between Todd Martin and Mats Wielander. Well, a little extra break here as uh, Alex Karachin took advantage of uh, the allowed bathroom break. Well, certainly a good time to do it. Change of starting to slip away. Change of clothes as well. And it looks like Courage is going to take something given to him by the trainers, perhaps to aid in the battle against the cramping. I understand he was given some electrolytes. It'll be interesting to see how he reacts now because he's been off the court and he hasn't been playing a point for five minutes. If he cools off a little bit, that's going to make the legs a little bit tighter. And you can see him trying to stretch those babies out. He's run an awful lot tonight already. It's a great call you made early on about it's not conditioning. He's a clay quarter, but it's the surface. the last set, set and a half. Hey. 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 Credit to Agassi. Agassi doesn't appear bothered at all, but at the same time, he certainly hasn't run as much. Something that Connors did so well. Pretty quick four set here, the way things are going at the moment. And no fitness concerns apparent at all for Agassi. <laughs> we certainly missed time that Tot's been lobbed. Try to break Karecha once again. Still two more chances for a four love lead. Deciding fifth set. Let's look at our Pepsid AC match summary. And uh, you might expect the difference for Agassi to be leading in both those categories. Top two. That's a lot of winners and a lot of unforced errors. 
Fetch about half in both categories. The big key, John, is that uh, Agassi only one more service break, but he's had far more chances. Try to take the positive out of the negative. He's had a lot of chances, so presumably he'll have more. Agassi has now had 18 break points in this match. He's won five. was during that point. A lot of noise during that particular point. And this uh, is not going to go in too often. That's like, let's get ready for the fifth set shot. It sort of looks like he's made a calculated decision not to put much more effort forth in this set. That's a good one, isn't it? if he's feeling tightness in his legs. It isn't if he's uh, feeling fine because uh, he could have been in this for a set. But well, once he reaches once this, he reaches this point. point. I've seen comebacks from four loves. But he's clearly not in the mindset at the moment to do that. And Agassi... <laughs> He's the number one player in the world at the moment. Desperate to win the U.S. Open and be ranked number one for the year, so he is not going to go away quietly. Oh. Well, we're on our way here to a possible bagel in the fourth set. Now all the appearance of heading to a fifth set. There's the need for Agassi to win one more game. Carisha certainly wants to hold a serve here. Yeah, that would be the one thing he'd want to do out of this set at this point. <laughs> well, if I were Agassi, I wouldn't go for too much, and I would play this game sort of not letting him Carisha give the game away. Don't even try to hit winners unless it's just absolutely gimmies and make the guy run some work because it's overwhelming likely he'd win the set anyway. Well, yeah, might as well just end it. So, the hell with you, John. Well, he'd also like to, I'm sure, start the fifth on his serve. That's true. I meant end break. Right. Yeah. Just yes, there. I'll play a nice 10, 12 minute point here, make the guy run a little bit, yeah. and then win. Exactly. planned on all along. Set point. That's always what I worried about when you hit one of those great sort of lucky shots. Did you really get into it with the crowd and enjoy it because you're worried about the next point? The tendency to lose a little bit of concentration. But I personally still liked Andre 
getting the most out of that. Got that right. The forehand is really coming in now. And there's a set. Wow, how a match can turn so quickly. Easy set for Agassi, and he will start the fifth on his serve. Fire Andre Agassi. Be ready these next couple of games. This is where Kretsch's last stand is going to come in. Now there's elation in our voices, and I think in the minds of many of the crowd, we've got a good night match at the 95 Open. Oh. <laughs> Luke's first point there. For us. That's right, Ted. Late last set, Karecha went off, bathroom break, and also some electrolytes. We're here with uh, tour trainer Doug Spreen. Yeah, we gave him some electrolytes. You can tell he's really been covering a lot of ground tonight. And uh, he appears to be showing some signs of fatigue and all and being tired. We just gave him some carbohydrate pills and some electrolyte pills, trying to give him a little pep and uh, try and get him back on again. He looks like he's cramping out there or had because he was doing some stretching in between points, but you said that might just be his style. That might just be his style. He might just be a little tight. Now, I don't know if he's really, I don't think he's necessarily going into cramps right now. I just think he feels a little bit tight and fatigued and he's just trying to stay loose. Hopefully we, we won't see him going to a full set of cramps. All right, Doug Spring, thanks. Ted? Doing a wonderful job of moving the ball all around. He really is. Uh, Croatia really struggling right now. And this youngster put forth a heck of an effort so far against Agassi, but Agassi's working on all cylinders right now. Confidence high. just standing there, not moving a muscle, and almost made that stretch volley. I think it would have paid off if he'd been a little bit more ready there. Maybe he was trying to surprise Karecha, but Karecha may be looking for a way out here. This is where you have to close the door. Just serving. Fifth set. Once again, really a good point by both players, and this is a huge game for Kareja. I guess he had a shot at that last volley. Kareja once again keeping the ball nice and low on the pass.
And that's unbelievably big. Early knock on Agassi that he didn't have the stamina to go the distance. Dispelled that one easily, particularly in his great match with Chang here last year. They thought that serve was out. Half played it and half wasn't ready to go, but he adjusted quickly and hit a great topspin lob. He's not too upset they called it in now. Correction moved much better in that point. He'll be running on his third or fourth run of adrenaline here. Now you mentioned that this is really a game Correction has to have. And possibly those electrolytes and the carbohydrate type pills he was given might kick in a little bit, give him a little bit extra energy. <laughs> Desperately needs this game. was hoping for. He bounces back. Uh. I guess he needs to be aggressive. Continue to go to net. You know Kretsch is going to probably catch the ball a little bit late now. Not get the ball quite as early as he did earlier in the match. I guess he can take advantage. Kretcher will try to make the adjustment and come in on Andre as well. Choice of shots here. The swinging volley. Kretcher in trouble there. Agassi chooses to hit the full swinging volley. Hits the net. Kretcher with plenty of time to line it up down the line. from that angle. Yes, 
Yes, he is with a great point. Correcha has played very well on great points tonight. at Stadium Court and Alex Kariccia is now up a break. Johnny seems to have some bounce back after playing a very lethargic fourth set. Third or fourth win right here. He's got to be careful doing what he just did there. If he's going to run around the back and he's got to make sure he does enough with that forehand. Or I guess he's going to pull it up the line on him like he did there. The slice that forehand, easy put away there for Agassi. Good first two points in this game. Correct, you're just guilty of hitting the ball too short in this game. Agassi all over. Some games he makes it look so easy. Good move by Correction to change things up. Shows a good touch around the net tonight. disappeared like his legs gave out. Let's see if he can come back again. Look at this here. No, maybe he mistimed it a little bit too. Someone whose legs are such a weapon. How frustrating it is when the legs aren't right. They've carried him a long way tonight. He doesn't have to worry a lot about his legs. He's got to worry about learning a little bit more about how to play, having, how to play on this hardcore surface, but uh, he's shown a lot to me tonight, irregardless if he wins or loses this. second to decide to do that, but still gets a nice break there. I don't think he was too sorry.
Fitting Krejci, this time there's a wide open court, pulled out cross court for a win. serving on serve in the fifth. Karecha has made so few errors like that tonight. Doesn't want to start now. Shots. He's paying dividends for him. Good depth and power. He's really committing himself. And now he should, he's got to go for a close right here. He knows one break should be all he needs. Absolutely. To go for two. Oh, that's beautiful. Really solid game so far. Once again, Karech on the run. Once you see him doing that slice forehand, you know it's desperation time for him. She's been around tennis now enough to have mastered some wonderful facial expressions. Excellent energy on the mm -hmm. sidelines. Give her credit. You'd oh! love to have that in your mm -hmm. entourage and group, that energy on the side. McEnroe is in the third round. So is Peter Korda. Knocked out Yako Elting. Young American Vince Spadia also to the third round. And Alexander Volkov who will play Patrick McEnroe. And there again he cuts it off. And Ted, you mentioned the last set and a half. Agassi is played incredibly well. He didn't play badly before that. Give this guy Karech a lot of credit. Yeah, that's right. This has been a good match. It's had peaks and valleys for both players. You 
have to look at something like this and say, hey, a guy like Sergi Bruguera could take an awful lot from what Correcha has been able to do to them. Just an energy and effort alone. That's, that's all I would ask. Good things happen when you try that hard. Agassi still has really helped him here, too. Give some much needed three points. Talking to his crew on the side. Despite the toughness, toughness of this man, seems to be enjoying himself. Just serving, 2-5 down, fifth set. by Correcia to get that two set to one lead. <laughs> What's wonderful about sports but agonizing for Correcia is how what takes so long to build up can be lost so quickly. Well, you got to start somewhere so you can't pace yourself really in any real sense you got to give it your all when you're playing the best Like Jimmy Connors, makes you run so much more than he runs. Tremendous 
just tremendous effort tonight, Andre. When did you know it was going to be an all-night affair against Karecha? You know, I mean, I think that uh, early in the first, you know, when he got up the early break on me and I was just, I felt like I was fighting uphill, you know, the whole way and wasn't quite finding my rhythm. And, you know, if you're not on your rhythm, you know, nothing separates you from, from somebody like Karecha. I mean, he's out here work, working his butt off and trying hard, and, and it's going to fall for him if I'm not playing my best tennis. And the bottom line was he got on top of me early. He got the confidence. He started believing he could win. Then you're in for a long evening. What does this do now for the, the long haul, the way you've come back? One set down, you're not great. And, uh, if you go back, uh, if you're looking at the record, coming back from 2-1 down. You know, you, you can't look at the record because over the past year I've been a different player. So you spend all your time looking to the past record, but nothing takes away the fact that I want to win this tournament. Now you got Stefan Edberg, and uh, he's going to give you a tough struggle, too. And you never played him before in a Grand Slam tournament. I would think that's got to be exciting. Yeah, we played a couple three out of five set matches. We played the finals of Palm Springs. He beat me. The finals of Key Biscayne. I beat him in the finals of Frankfurt. So we've had some battles. And needless to say, he's a great champion. And we, uh, the crowd's going to be in for a very entertaining match. How about the crowd tonight playing in the midst of all this? Five sets, New York, and they're going crazy. I have to you. say, when I hit that one shot from over my head and the crowd was so loud, your ears start ringing. It's like you're at a concert out here this is the most amazing environment to play tennis in and gosh this is what this is what i'll remember long after my career right here all right congratulations tonight andre agassi ted back to you up in the booth well that was well said because that's the memory we'll have great action tonight a valiant effort by spain too much from the defending champ and a five-set victory that sends agassi to a third round battle with stefan edberg